Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC. On a very quiet Wednesday in the middle of a week, at the end of which Liverpool will play the Champions League final. Liverpool versus Real Madrid on Saturday in the Champions League final. A repeat of 2018, a repeat of 1981. We are one and one in European Cup finals against the team who famously wear white. And we will be looking to make it 2-1 this time. We do not want a repeat of 2018, which was absolutely horrible. One of the worst nights in the history of Anfield Index and Anfield Index podcasts. And I'm sure in the history of your fandom of the club as well. The manner in which we lost, the goals that were conceded, it was just a horror show all round. This time, we're a better team. They're not as good. Go through our team. We have Ali now instead of instead of Karius. Trent is better now than he was then. Robbo is better now than he was then. Virgil, still the same guy. Matip or Kanate, massive upgrades over the pedal. Fabinho in the six rather than Henderson, big upgrade. Henderson over Milner, big upgrade. Thiago or Naby over Ginny, big upgrade. Up front, Salah is a better all-round player now than he was then. Mane is not as good as he was then, but as a nine, is probably a more dangerous goal scorer than Bobby was at that time. And Diaz, I think, now is as good as Mane was back then. So, overall, I think we're a vastly superior team than we were. I think we've got much better depth now as well. Remember when Mo went off and Adam Lalana came onto the pitch and then ran around aimlessly for 60 minutes doing absolutely nothing. Now we've got real threats off the bench in the form of Jota, Bobby, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, people like that. We will have threats off the bench. You look at their team. Now they're better in goal. Courtois is, is um, a superior goalkeeper to Kaylor Navas. That Marcelo was better than this Mendy. That Carvial was better than this Carvial. I would rather have Militao than... Hmm. I'd rather have Varane than... No, I'd rather have Varane than Militao. That Varane, not this Varane. Current Varane, no. But 2018 Varane, I'd rather have him than Militao. I'd rather have Alaba, any version of him, than Sergio Ramos. Casemiro is not quite as good. Modric isn't as good. Cruz has fallen off the most of that three in midfield. And up front, was it Isco started on the right? They're probably better in that role. I think Benzema is a better player now, but as good as Vinicius is, he's not as good as Cristiano was. I think they're significantly worse than they were. Now, that doesn't mean anything because in 2005, we played AC Milan. We played them again in 07. We were a better team in 07 than we had been in 05. They were a worse team in 07 than they had been in 05, and they managed to beat us. So it doesn't really mean anything to say that we're a better team now and they're a worse team, but we do feel like there's something about this team now. We, this team feels really, really hard to beat. That team didn't feel hard to beat. We had to win games by going out and blowing the opposition away. Now we're a very different animal We've got far more experience in these type of games as well. Remember, none of our lads had been in the Champions League final at that point. This will be their a lot of their third. Obviously, Real have tons and tons of Champions League now. But do they have that killer instinct? Do they have that cutting edge that they had? I don't know. Benzema is 
on an absolute tear this season and has been since Cristiano left and he didn't have to carry him anymore. But I do feel like they're not as much of a threat now as they were then. A lot of it with Benzema is just cut off the supply. Just cut the supply off. He's not the type that can create his own goal. He needs that supply. Most of it comes from Vinicius. If we can stop him, I think we stop Real. Now, Modric is a freak of nature. Cruz can still pick a pass as well as anybody, but they're not as good as they were. There is also a Liverpool versus Real Madrid battle taking place off the pitch for Aurelian Chouameni of Monaco. Now, reports came out yesterday, or no, not reports, a report came out yesterday stating that he had told his teammates he was going to sign for Real Madrid. That followed reports from Dave Maddock and Paul Gorst, neither of whom are reliable, that Liverpool had been informed he was going to Real. I have my doubts. And here's why. If you read the report on RMC, it doesn't say anything. There's no detail in it other than he'll sign for Real for 80 million euro plus bonuses on a five-year contract. But from Spain, the reports are, well, Real aren't willing to pay anything close to that kind of money. Other reports from France state that he hasn't made a decision yet and that we intend to meet with him again and we're going to make a big push next week. So I wonder, did that RMC report come from Chouameni or did it come from Real Madrid? Because it wouldn't be the first time Real have done something like this where they leak certain information in the run-up to a big game. I'm surprised we haven't heard more about their interest in Sadio and Mo over the last few days. But I wonder if they're maybe trying to play some mind games. The other factor here as well, they don't want to pay 80 million euro for him. Now, I don't think the price will be 80 million euro anyway, but they don't want to pay big money. They want to drive that price right the way down. And the only way they can do that is if we're not in the mix. It is just us and them. Ignore everybody who tells you Chelsea are in the mix. They're not. They never really have been. They met with his agent last year. It didn't go anywhere, and they haven't spoken since. It's us and it's Real. And for Real to get him at the price they want, they need us to walk away. They need us to make a decision that, okay, we've lost out here. Let's go elsewhere. And then Real can go back to Monaco and say, well, look, He wants to join us. You've got no other option. What are you going to do? But we know he's agreed terms with us. He's had a medical with us. He's met with Klopp. So he clearly is keen on the move. I don't think that one is over yet. Now, look, he may well end up going there. I think he's foolish if he does. Because for us, he starts as a number eight. He starts with Fabinho and Thiago in our midfield. He plays as a box-to-box monster, does absolutely everything, gets forward, gets goals, helps defensively, becomes destructive when we don't have the ball, can carry the ball when we do, can make off-ball runs, get himself in the box. We've seen he's a decent finisher. He's really good in the air. For Real... I mean, the issue is he could play as an eight for them. But even if you take Cruz and Modric out and say, well, they're, you know, they're past their best. They're on the downside of their careers. They still have Valverde and they still have Camavinga. And I would imagine he'll be behind them in terms of minutes as a number eight. Which really limits them to games as a six. And Casemiro plays a lot and is only 29. I don't know that he's going to get anywhere close to the type of minutes. Like you look at Camavinga this season, he's played less than half the minutes he did in the last two seasons at Wren. So with Chouameni having just 
had a really good season with Monaco, does he really want his development to take a step backwards by spending most of the year sat on the bench at Real Madrid as the sixth midfielder? Because regardless of what anyone tells you, Cruz and Modric are sticking around another year and they will play because they're Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. Casemiro will play because he's Casemiro. Valverde's going to be ahead of him. Camavinga's going to be ahead of him. He comes to us. He's going to be a starter. And he'll also get games as the six because I think long-term, the plan would be for him to succeed Fab as that number six. But in the short term, I think he comes in over Henderson and Naby and starts with Fab and Thiago as the third midfielder. And then Naby's sort of the backup eight. Henderson's the backup six who can play as an eight when needed. I think that's kind of our core five. You'll have your first choice starters, Chuameni, Thiago, Fabinho, your depth starters, Naby and Henderson. And then you have your depth. And by that, I mean players that will play in the Cups and they'll play certain league games. They'll be on the bench. They'll get minutes from there. Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. And if he sticks around, James Milner. And if he doesn't, maybe someone else comes in as well. I just think if you chew him any, you'd be absolutely mental to turn your back on this Liverpool team. Because you can go to Real Madrid at any point. You're 21 years of age. You could play for five years at Liverpool. You're still only 26. And Real will still want you if you're the player everybody expects you to become. So you can still do the Real thing at a later date. But you could get five years at Liverpool, winning Premier Leagues, winning Champions Leagues, playing under the best manager in the world, surrounded by world-class talent. And you know Klopp is here for the next four years at least. You, you know that. That is nailed on. Klopp is signed up for the next four years. Who knows how many managers Real Madrid will have in the next four years. In the last four years, they had Zidane, Lupetegui, Zidane again, and now Carlo. So who knows how many managers they'll have in that time. Real change managers frequently. If we take a look at the list of Real Madrid managers. So, since 2010, we've had, since so the summer 2010, we've had Roy, Kenny, Rogers, Klopp, four managers. We would all accept, and everybody connected to the club would accept, that Roy was a massive mistake. And Kenny probably shouldn't have been given the job permanently. But those two were only ever short-term managers. This lot, they've appointed Mourinho, Carlo, Rafa, Zidane, Lupetegui, Solari for six months, Zidane again, and Carlo. All on permanent deals bar Solari. And it may even be, have been that they thought they'd hang on to him for a while. He was actually the permanent manager because in Spain, the rules are that you can't have a caretaker for more than two weeks. So he was actually made permanent manager and then he was sacked six months later so he does count as a permanent manager so one two three four five six seven eight managers now we've had four and two of them were only ever expected to be short term but Mourinho was 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 what he was Carlo was what he was Rafa was a long-term appointment just didn't work very well it it's madness they've just turned managers over go back before that in the time we had Rafa from 04 to the summer of 2010, they had Camacho, Ramon, Luxembourgo, Caro, Capello, Schuster, Juan de Ramos, 
and Pellegrini. They had eight managers in the time we had Rafa. Eight. The longest serving Real Madrid manager of the past fifth, 48 years. 48 years, the longest serving manager is Vincente del Bosque, who was manager for three and a half years. 233 games. That's the longest serving Real Madrid manager since the early 70s. Since Munoz left after a 14 year stint, that's the longest serving manager they've had. That is insanity. Insanity. Think about it. Since then, we've had Paisley, Kenny, Evans, Julier, Rafa, and now Klopp, who've all served longer tenures than Del Bosch did at Real. That club is just constantly in churn. I, it's not a great... It's not a good place for young players to go. It just isn't. Like, look at the look at the amount of the amount of young players that have gone there in recent years and just not reached their potential. Like Vinicius is finally hitting a groove in the last 18 months, but it took him three years. Rodrigo is still struggling to find his way. Luka Jovic was the most highly sought after young striker the year he became available flopped. Teo Hernandez got no real look in. He's now one of the best left backs in the world at Milan. Hakimi got no look in. He's now one of the best right backs in the world at PSG. Valverde still isn't a starter. Camavinga's not a starter. Asensio never developed the way he was expected to. Isco never developed. Now, Isco's maybe been there eight years at this point. He's never really developed He's still the same player he was. Rail's not a good place to go if you're a young player. Varane is the only one I can think of. I suppose you could say Ramos as well. But Varane is the only one I can think of that went there as this massively touted young player and reached their ceiling. And even at that, he might not have reached his ceiling because of the injuries. Ramos would probably be the other one, but he went there as a right back and became the world's most overrated centre-back. He's a really good right-back. Really, really good, but a massively overrated centre-back. It's just weird to me. They're, just, they're not good at developing young players. And I don't think it would benefit too many to go there. I really don't. Um, this is Anfield. Has news that Liverpool have confirmed the Paris fan zone ahead of the Champions League final. There is a boss night production been put on. Jamie Webster, the Lightning Seeds, and John Power headlining the act. Oh, the Sense of Sound Singers. Sorry. Sense of Sound Singers also performing. Uh, there is also information on this is Anfield about the trophy parade, the time, the route, et cetera, et cetera. <sighs> It seems like tempting fate. It really does. I, I don't like the idea of it, but it is what it is. Uh, Liverpool are once again working with Neuro 11, the penalty experts ahead of the Champions League final. So that's always good. Fabinho and Joe Gomez are in training, but Thiago is still absent. Now, Paul Joyce has reported that Thiago isn't ruled out. He does have a chance of making it. I'd imagine he makes the bench. That would be my guess. I think Fabinho starts with Henderson and Naby in midfield, and I think Thiago's on the bench. That's my guess. Lots of other stuff there on This Is Anfield. Do check that out. Liverpool.com have a piece up about the potential of starting Bobby and maybe going 4 2 3 1. 
Uh, I would say no to that, being honest. Uh, Liverpool confirmed transfer offers exciting reunion who will upgrade departing Jurgen Klopp duo. This is about Harvey and Fabio Carvalho. Obviously, they were together at Fulham and we have reunited them at Anfield. Liverpool articulate desire on Salah and Mane contracts as transfer race begins. It does seem very much like there's a lot of interest in Sadio, but maybe clubs have been warned off of Mo. Now, I could be wrong about that, but it does seem the case. Um, some talk here about Calvin Ramsey and how both Bologna and Leeds are also interested, but I think he does fancy the Liverpool move, to be honest. So I expect us to get him. Uh, FSG speaking out on contracts. Tom Werner, anytime he opens his mouth, it, it just, I, I can't read it. So we just close that. Um, Liverpool could sign ideal Trent Alexander Arnold backup via transfer that offers Man City Edge. Strange. Denzel Dumfries. I mean, it's just such a nonsensical suggestion. It really is a nonsensical suggestion. He only moved to Inter Milan last year. He's not going to leave a starting role at Inter Milan to come and sit on our bench. He's a Dutch international. He's not going to sit on the bench for us. Uh, on AnfieldIndex.com, there is a piece up entitled Rage Against the Machine by the Machine, Stephen Smith. Plenty of new podcasts. There is the latest Under Pressure. Gags and Simon were away, but Dan Kennett, Dan Rhodes and Phil Barker had a chat. There's also the most recent Scouts of Tommies. There is the most recent AI Scouted with myself and Carl. Um, make sure you ask Carl if you're talking to him on Twitter or anywhere to show you his new foam hands. Um, if you listened to a Scouted pod a few weeks ago, when we had qualified for the Champions League final and the foam hands were released on the Liverpool shop, Carl was outraged at the idea of foam hands. So I bought him two and had them delivered to his house today. Why two, may you ask? Because he has two hands. So I thought he needed two of them. Why not? Uh, that's me for today, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.